I'm going to start off with old Adelaide Jail. Back in 1964, I was 18. No, no, 65. I must have been 19. I uh, was arrested for a vagrancy because uh, you couldn't get the dole back then unless you had a house to live in so they could mail out your checks. And I'd had a record as a teenager for housebreaking. So every time the coppers picked me up and checked who I was, they'd see the housebreaking record and think I was a crim. But actually, I was a hip, hippie. Well, a beatnik it was back then. If you read Jack Kerouac novels, you'll find out what a beatnik is. It's like a drifter that uh, bums around but has a good time. Like, <laughs> And I was determined to become a good one. And later on, I did and had a great life. But back then, I got busted uh, I was starting to hitchhike to Sydney and a copper pulled over. He said, hey, you, come here to the car. I gave some answers, but they didn't believe it, so their brains were clicking over like Geiger counters and they heard I hitched from interstate for one night in town. They got on the radio to check my record. Surely they could tell I was a harmless beatnik on the road, man, just looking for kicks. But they got a message that I had a record, so they put me in a cell at Theberton in Adelaide. Next morning I went before a judge. The defendant has a record for housebreaking and larceny as a servant. Asked why he'd come to Adelaide, he said, to play snooker. The police suspect housebreaking is his lifestyle. This was no longer a joke. I was sentenced to two months for vagrancy. It was my second time in ancient old Adelaide jail, so I was not perturbed about the jokes about me being a cat that you receive at least twice the first day. I was only doing two months, so I wasn't allocated a job, so I could laze around the concrete yard in the sun with funny bums and small-time crims. Adelaide still had no library, but crims swapped cowboy paperback novels they called yippies. I think most of us pretended we were cowboy outlaws in some Texas pen. I know I did. Capital punishment was still around in 65. One morning, a guy called Ryan, uh, Robert Ryan, was about to go to the gallows and uh, the radio announcer said, Robert Ryan is about to be hung. And then he played Elvis's, wear my ring around your neck. We all thought that was a great joke. Uh, every cell had a little speaker box where the, you could listen to the radio, but it was uh, the, the station was chosen by a screw in a control room somewhere. But luckily, Adelaide had a rock and roll station, 5KA, so we could listen to rock and roll. Uh, having a cell to myself was good. To be locked in Adelaide, you feel as like you're back in the 1836 convict days. It was near the city and next to the railway tracks, so you could, if you listen hard, you could hear the trains rattle by. I'm not obsessed by shit, but Adelaide in 65 still had buckets. No toilets were yet installed. The tins came with a lid to combat the crap smell. Every morning before breakfast, we'd line up and shuffle along to tip the contents into a trough that led to sewers. The bucket would be rinsed in fennoil to ensure that the can would not offend of delicate nostrils. Adelaide was a holding jail for anyone doing less than three months, so inmates were small-time idiots like me. There was no glass in the windows, just a high-up opening, I think about 20 inches wide and 12 inches high, I think, with bars set in concrete. A few raindrops splashed in if the wind blew from the north. The jail uniform was blue cotton denim trousers, not actually jeans, but they were similar. There was a three-coloured up and narrow up-and-down pinstripe shirt. Black, th But the good thing was we had these black thick woolen pea jackets uh, they were called, that made us look like 1880 English naval seamen. In Yatla, they wore shorter Air Force-type woolen jackets that year. 
All jails issued you heavy black boots and thick socks. There was no brand name sneakers. There was no outside possessions. So there was not much stealing or violence. Now that nowadays crims are allowed personal material items, that leads to poorer crims stealing from rich ones. Thus more biff ups, which leads to more security. If every crim had exactly the same possessions, it would cost taxpayers less, and a lot more jail security stuff staff would be out of a job. <laughs> Two crims had a go at taken my tobacco but I went into my psycho act so they let me be. Ever since the curry kid had biffed me in McGill reformatory I'd kept an eye peeled for native Australians. <laughs> the ones I've met seem to fight for the fun of it. After getting released, oh yeah that's another story, I got a job labouring then a bus to Sydney, then I lost my dough gambling. Anyway that's another story, this is, this is the first one. Uh, I wanted to tell how the uniform back then, it's very unusual. We look like, San, you know, you ever see a movie called San Quentin? Well, it's an old movie about San Quentin, but Adelaide Jail, and I think later on Long Bay, had exactly the same sort of uniform. It was almost like denim, but it was made of cotton. And I don't, I think there was no d toilets in the cells in Long Bay when I got there either. No, the first time I got there, there wasn't any. Everyone had a shit bucket. So anyway, Adelaide had shit buckets. But uh, Yatla, when I went to Yatla later on in Adelaide, they had proper toilets. <coughs> All right, that's my story. It's not very interesting to crims these days, but people that remember, I'd love to... <laughs> I'd love to hear from any bloody old-timers uh, to see if my memory is correct. But I'm pretty sure everything I said was exactly the way it was. Adelaide had some fabulous characters hanging around the yard. You know, there was not much standover stuff, and, and everybody got on pretty good back then. <laughs> <laughs>